Uh, on the other hand, you see on the right another big uh, <coughs> advantage to use the Simulink uh, toolbox is that you have actual RF impairments or Gaussian noise or channel estimation blocks that are provided by Simulink. And you can still use them to simulate your actual FPGA design with impairments from the real world, to, so to push your simulation really much more further and see if your algorithm still operates in noisy condition or really drastic uh, condition. So all this is done uh, in simulation, so saving you times, uh, and you at least you don't have that much surprise when you're going into the real world. So if we look under the block of the IFFT, <coughs> we can see actually that one advantage of the system generator tools is that my FFT is only implemented by a block, so everything is already done for me, so that's one time saving tools. <coughs> the other one is that you can simulate, we see the graph here, so when I simulate, I see the actual results of my, uh, of my algorithms, and also the, another big uh, advantage is, is that the simulation will give, like I mentioned earlier, the actual latency of the core and the specific FPGA that you use for simulation. So it's helped a lot to, lo to know that the results of your FFT IP core will be like 200 clock cycle later. I think that's a pretty important point to, know, uh, to notice that. Some kind of thing that you can't see in an MCO simulation. And finally, again, the coexistence between the, uh, the system generator tools and the Simulink block set is another block which is two workspace which enables to take the actual simulated signals and output it to my MATLAB workspace. So what I can do with that afterward is simply input, input back my results and compare with what I had in the M code simulation. So we can see the, that the actual pattern generated but an IP core in HDL code gives the actual same results that my uh, M code uh, simulation. So that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, loop, a loop back and forth between your uh, proof of concept, starting proof of concept and that move to HDL is what to me saved uh, the most time because when you, it doesn't work in HDL, you can go back and forth with that kind of uh, from workspace into workspace and exchange and see where, uh, where is the, the problem. So that, that saves me a lot of time during my development. <clears throat> so now to complete the loop, if now we are uh, actually uh, simulating uh, the detection of the, the actual preamble that we generated using the IFFT, uh, <clears throat> but the convolution can be easily uh, implemented in FPGA using uh, finite and post response filters, which will implement uh, the actual convolution of what we need. So, uh, in fact, the actual coefficient of these filters are the coefficient that I generated in, uh, in the M code. So, I can just input it again from the coexistence of the both architecture. And again, we can see and simulate that our uh, finite and post response filters are developing, uh, are uh, acting as supposed, since we can see the actual peaks, and after that, it's pretty straightforward to detect the highest peak and say, okay, my OFDM burst is starting right there. <clears throat> so that makes, and that's the actual, I will say, uh, way of uh, detecting the packets in my actual OFDM demonstration. That's exactly that, what, I, what I've just done. And even just to push forward, let's say we can push a simulation uh, by adding uh, in the F VHDL model the Gaussian noise source and see if our uh, filters are still operating uh, as expected. So under zero dB condition, we see that on the eye, we, can, we cannot detect the actual uh, pattern at all, but from the output of the match filtering, we can still distinct the actual highest peak and still uh, being able to uh, synchronize ourselves um, from the start of the burst. <clears throat> and after that, the next step will simply be to, to use the, uh, the system generator compilation tool and actually generate the final bitstream, just easy as it is. So, <clears throat> so you see that it's really nice because you can actually uh, you can actually compile 
specific bitstream for a specific FPGA that you use. Uh, so you only need to select uh, your part, which is, for example, a Vertex 6, with the actual FPGA clock uh, that you're going to use, and all the timing constraint and analyze is going to be done by itself. You just need to wait, grab a coffee or something, and, and, uh, and wait for it to be ready for, test, for testing. <coughs> so now, let's extrapolate that, that web developing. In fact, that's what I did for, I'll say, every small blocks in my uh, OFDM uh, file demonstration. And uh, just now, I will just uh, explain the demonstration that we're gonna go, going to show today. So, yeah, configuration step. The first step, first of all, uh, first of all, it's going to be after power up, the FPGA is going to be programmed uh, using the bitstream that I generated from a kind of model that we see earlier, so a model with system generator blocks. <clears throat> the second step is, gonna be, is going to be a IP address assignation from a, a host laptop so that they can communicate uh, between each other using that blue cable here, which is a gigabit Ethernet uh, cable port. The third step is going to be to configure the actual radio, which is going to be the one which is going to send the baseband INQ signal uh, to the actual over-the-air signal and going to be received back uh, on the same uh, FPGA. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, and after, after the FMC radio configuration, we're actually going to use, in fact, the uh, new tag record and playback tools, uh, which enable uh, to put a big file in memory, and after that, being able to play it back in your design and use it for a simulation. In our case, it's going to be uh, a video file that, we're, that, we're going, uh, that we are going to download directly in the DDR3 memory. After that, that's what we're going to send over the air uh, for transmission. And after reception, it's going to be sent to the to the laptop running a Linux virtual machine, and we're going to uh, receive the video and output it in real time. <coughs> so just maybe for you, uh, which want to know a little bit more, what was implemented and what will need to be done in uh, in my uh, MBDK. OFDM demo, at first we see that all the basic block on a, of an, an F OFDM uh, file layer was implemented. Only the uh, uh, forward error correction scheme is not implemented yet. But we can see that all this from the EFFT, the pilot insertion, the space-time block coding, everything was implemented and generated using uh, our uh, MBDK uh, way of designing same thing on the reception. Uh, we're lacking a CFO correction and automatic gain control for the moment. Uh, but all the rest, the FFT, the channel estimation, and uh, the QAM decoder, everything was still uh, implemented in MDK, and no HDL code was written during uh, that development. <clears throat> so just maybe uh, to summarize the time-saving tools from our uh, way of developing, First, uh, like I explained, is the bridge between uh, the M code proof of concept model and the system generator uh, HDL generating model. It's bring, uh, it saves a lot of time uh, in during your development. Uh, the block set of pre-compiled DSP, uh, DSP algorithms from system generator does bring and save a lot of time because I don't think you want to code an IFFT algorithm by yourself in HDL. It can be uh, time consuming. Uh, the cycle through and the uh, uh, simulation help a lot to debug the timing and latency constraint at first, so you can simulate them so you don't have any surprise in real time. And all using the graphical debugging tools, it's really much easier uh, to debug. And the automatic code generation is just pretty straightforward. It's just a, a really nice tool to do. Uh, so now I think it's time, it's kind of a show time for the demonstration. Uh, so we'll just do the steps that we just show, so we can boot the, the platform. So don't be surprised, uh, the fans uh, are making uh, some noise for the moment, but it's for the good of everybody. 
So now we just wait for the bitstream configuration, which is in the, in the flash memory of, the, of our new tag board. And after IP address assignation, which will be in some second. Yeah, we just need to wait now. <laughs> So we see an IP address was assigned. <coughs> now we're using that IP address, we can actually configure the radio that's from, that's from the software tools that are provided with our new tag board. So make it pretty easy to, uh, to configure the platform with our software development kit. And now we're going to directly using, again, uh, our RTDX connection, download our uh, video file into the DDR3 memory of the board. Uh, and we're going to illustrate the playback feature. After that, by uh, simply playbacking the video uh, from the memory to the actual OFDM transmitter and receive it back, like you will see uh, in a second. So now the video has been downloaded and is actually uh, transmitting. So we just need to connect uh, ourselves to the actual receive data and uh, enjoy the, the video. Okay, so you just had some problem to synchronize, but uh, that this is done. So that just maybe for your information, uh, the data rate of that video, it's uh, HD quality. It's like eight, megab uh, eight megabit per second uh, for the moment. So, uh, no. So uh, thank you very much for your patience and your presence. And uh, we, you can show us, I think we're hiring in a 2000, uh, uh, Hall 2000. Uh, so you can show, uh, you can see a new tech boot and uh, see the demo running and ask us questions. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone, thanks. <laughs>